I will let the scripture speak. Amen. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 4. We are reading from verse number 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now pay attention to, pay attention to the language carefully. Pay attention. He said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. If your Bible is for you, I want you to underline that. It means that Cain was nothing but a gift from God. I want you to underline that because the Bible says the gift of God are perfect. There was no any defectiveness in Cain. Do you understand? So God gave a gift and the gift was perfect. Full of the perfection of God. He said, I have gotten a gift. A man. From the Lord. I want you to underline that because we will get back to it. I'm just pointing you, giving you some pointers. And based on the pointers, we will address certain hidden revelations. Verse 2. Verse 2. And she get she again bear his brother Abel or Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain Was a tiller of the ground. Verse 3. So now here we know the operations of Cain and we know the operations of Abel. But one thing that you have to understand is that Abel did not just get up and started taking care of sheep. And Cain, he did not just wake up one day and say, I am going to plant seed. Because for these two purposes or these two office to be manifested, or for someone to operate in the office of just a farmer who tilled the land and a shepherd who shepherd the flocks, they might stuff, they might have learned it from somewhere else. You see, your kid, your child. Speak the same language that you speak. Because your child was not born with the language. Your child speak the same language because that is the language that the child came and realized that the mother and the father speaks. So wherever you are, if you are born in France, you realize that you start to speak in French. 
If your mother and your father happens to speak in a specific language, then you realize that you happen to also comprehend the said language. Cain and Abel was just doing the work of the father. They were just doing the work of the father because that is the thing that they have seen the father and the mother doing. So to dispel the notion that one was doing good, one was doing bad, based on whether one was a farmer, therefore that's no good, and one was a flock, therefore that is uh, that was a, that one was a shepherd, therefore he, he tended to the flocks. That was so good because Jesus was a good shepherd. That is false. Because the Bible do not have anything against a farmer. Or someone who tilled the ground, in other words, and someone who tend the sheep. And we'll go into the scriptures. We'll have to make things completely clear because the scripture tells us there are different forms of sacrifice that the scripture has made it known. Come on, let's go to the scriptures. I think I have to do more explanation here. Let's go to the scriptures. So we are going to talk about meat offering and we have wheat offering. Cain gave a wheat offering. Abel gave a meat offering. A meat offering in Leviticus chapter number 2. Verse 1 to 2. Leviticus chapter number 2. Verse 1 to 2. Let's read. And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord. His offering shall be of fine flour. And he shall pour oil on it and put a Frankenstein thereof or frankincense thereof. Hallelujah. So he's telling us if anybody is coming to offer a meat sacrifice. Last time I talked about different type of altars. The Bible talks about four altars. You see when you look at the scripture the Bible says and he made an altar and he made an altar but when you go into the Jewish culture in their custom there are four different type of altar and every altar determines what sort of sacrifice will be accepted on the altar? So you just don't come to a place and you begin to bring anything because you want to put something on the altar. No, according to the time, if you come to God and you are going to give anything, you have to make sure that you give it to the right altar. Amen. So I have spoken about that before. I don't want to go into details. We have altar that must be made only by stones. And we have altar that has to be made only by clay. In Hebrew, they call altar mesbia. And there are different types of mesbia. For example, if you come to the Lord and you are making a sacrifice of meat and grains, you have to make a sacrifice with a combination of a stone and an earth, which is a clay altar. When you come for pouring of libation, then you have to make a clay altar which is called Misbia Adama. So, when the Bible talks about altar, there are multiple types and form of altar, and each and every altar that you make, the 
determine the sort of sacrifice that one can sacrifice on the altar. So the book of Leviticus made it completely clear that when you come to sacrifice or give a meat offering, a meat sacrifice, then it must be made very, very nice and clean with incense and all the qualities thereof. So there is a meat sacrifice. Numbers chapter 18, verse 12. Numbers chapter 18, verse 12. Let's go to Numbers. Chapter 18, verse 12. All the best of oil and all the best of wine and all the best of wheat, the first fruits of them, which they shall offer unto the Lord, them I, them have I given thee. Now let me read that again. All the best of oil, all the best of wine, but all the best of wheat and the first fruit of them which they shall offer unto the Lord them have I given thee verse 13 and whatsoever is first wrapped in the, in the land which they shall bring unto the Lord shall be thine Everyone that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. So here the Bible is making clear about a sacrifice which is a farm produce. It means things that we tilt on the ground. So the Bible has made it completely clear that somebody can bring a meat offering and someone and also bring a wheat offering, a wine offering, depending on the sort of trade that they engaged in. So if he, if, if he got a lot of grapes farm, then he brings wine. If he got a lot of sheep, he brings sheep. If you got a lot of cattle, he brings some of the cows. So there was not any, any issue the sort of sacrifice that Cain brought or the sort of sacrifice that Abel presented before God. And I have made it clear from the beginning to you that the sin of Cain is not him killing his brother. But I will tell you, because the Bible is a book of revelation, you have to allow the Spirit of God to guide you in order to see past. Because if the sin of Cain was killing his brother, then God should have punished Cain straight away when Cain had killed his brother. But God had to talk to him. And try to understand him. So the issue is not that him killing his brother. Even though that is bad. That was not his sin. We will get there. Walk with me. Walk with me. We are going through a rabbit hole. And I want you to walk with me. Hold my hands and let's do it together. So somebody said, but why? What is going on? Let's go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number three. No, sorry, chapter number four. Let's go to the Genesis chapter four. We are going to verse three. Genesis chapter four, verse three. Now let's do this together. And in process of time, it came to pass. Now, if the Bible is for you, I want you to underline this statement.
in process of time it came to pass i want you to underline this statement with me now let's continue the cane brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto the lord in process of time do you understand that statement i'm going to show you the reason why i said there is a lot that needs to be unpacked here genesis chapter 2 it just say that abel was born Genesis chapter 4 verse 2, Abel was born. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1, Cain was born. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3, they are giving a sacrifice. Do you understand that you cannot give, a birth, give birth to a baby today and they give sacrifice tomorrow? You cannot give birth to a baby today. And as you just turn around, the next day you came, you look at your baby and, and your baby opened the mouth and you got all 32 set of teeth. And the baby just looking at mom and say, mom, just put me down. I just want to go outside and play some football. Oh, mom, leave me alone. I'm not taking no milk. I want to have a steak, mom. Or the baby just stand away and say, hey woman, where is my pants? I want to go out now. Bring my pants, woman. Of course, you'll be running away thinking that you might have seen a devil or you, have, you might have conceived and given birth to a demon. So we all know that for a baby to grow, To get to a point that they have the logic, the strength, and the understanding to become farmers, there has been a process of time. Number two, the Bible made it clear. That the sacrifice of Cain and Abel was not the first sacrifice that they have rendered to God. You can see that. It's not the first sacrifice. It's not the second. It's not the third. It's not the fourth sacrifice. There has been a lot of processes of sacrifice going on here because he says... In the process of time. That means that after they grew, after they started doing all the things that they have to do, it came to a point that in the process of time, one day, so every day they come and give the offering. They give the sacrifice. Just like any other Christian. Every day you come to the church, you, you give your offering, you give a sacrifice. Every day you come to the church, you come to the church. Then it came to a process of time that as you gave your offering, God said, take off your money. And you turn and say, who's talking? You take off your money from the offering bowl. Come on, go away. Take that money off. I refuse that money from you. I refuse that gift from you. I refuse that offering from you. I refuse that sacrifice from you. Take it out. In the process of time. Ladies and gentlemen, you see what has happened here. The sin of Cain is not killing his brother. The sin of Cain is disrespecting 
God. It has nothing to do about killing his brother. You see, let's continue. And I will show to you from the scriptures we are reading, Cain sin. Which have nothing to do about killing his brother. We will get there. But it's a, it's a disrespect for God. I want you to go with me. To Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 in the New Testament. Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Romans chapter 6 verse 16 and I read. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servant to obey his servant ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience into righteousness whom you believe whom you obey that thing that you obey you become a servant to what you obey. 